Yeah. Welcome to the Book of Acts Now Global Church and School. We're glad you're tuned in with us today. And we're excited to continue our study in the 22 letters of the Hebrew alphabet. Today we're looking at Resh. And it makes uh, this form here. And uh, it means head or highest person. And we're going to take a look at some biblical words to see how Resh is used to get an understanding of how the Bible writers used it. Part of the building blocks of the Word of God. And uh, so those of you that have um, a reference to uh, the alphabet at home, you may want to uh, look at that, or you go online to HebrewForChristians.com, and there's an alphabet there. But primarily we're looking at the Reish. Okay, so the first word we're going to look at is Rabbi, our Master. And it's made up of just two letters. It's the Reish and this letter here, which is the Bet, the second letter of the alphabet. And if you put that together, reading from right to left, this mark here is a, either an E or an A. It means Rav, R-A-V, Rav. And, um, and so what does it mean? Well, this means, remember, head or highest person. So head or highest person of the house is the master and um, the rabbi. Okay, and so we have the house of God. That might be the pastor, or, um, you know, uh, depending on what kind of house you're in. All right, so let's take a look at uh, the next uh, word, which is significant. It's shout of joy, or to shout joy is made up of three letters. And so it's made up of the resh. This is the noon, if you look at your alphabet, which means life, right? Hey, which is to reveal or declare. So if you put those three terms together, what does it mean? What does joy really mean? Joy means the highest person's life is declared. Come on now, we've got to think about that a second. If you will declare the highest person's life, who's that? Yeshua, Christ. If you will declare His life, not only will it give joy to other people, but if you bring salvation and joy to somebody else, what are you going to get? You're going to get joy too. That's why the Bible says, even the angels in heaven have joy and rejoice when one sinner comes to Christ and salvation. And so God wants us to participate in that, helping others experience the joy and life of salvation, and we get to share in their joy. Can somebody say amen? I'm going to tell you a story that happened years ago. I was a Bible student. I was uh, just out of the Marines, you know, a few years earlier. I still had that hardness of heart from military training. And I had been asked to, to give Bible studies to a guy um, that had mental illness problems, schizophrenia. And uh, he was at a church service where we were uh, presenting the gospel. There was an altar call. They were singing that old gospel hymn, Just As I Am, Without One Plea. It was the, and he had been there a number of times. I was sitting right behind him, and I was praying. His name was Tom. I was praying for Tom that he would accept Christ, that he would receive him and experience salvation and deliverance from the torment he was having mentally. I was sitting right behind him and I realized, wait a minute, this is the last night for him to respond. In fact, it was at the end of the service, the sermon was already done, it was the last song and the last verse of the last song, and this man had not received Christ. And I was sitting behind him praying, oh God, let this be the night that Tom will receive and confess Christ as his Savior. And you know what happened? On the last, the last chorus, Tom got up and began to labor. He was a big guy. Began to labor his way down to the altar to surrender his life to Christ. And the old hardness of heart that that Marine, ex-Marine had, former Marine, broke my heart and I began to weep for Tom. Because I realized he was experienced freedom and Christ and the joy of salvation by going forward and confessing Him. And it broke my hardness of heart. And I experienced the joy and the shout of joy of salvation. Womb and compassion is made up. Uh, by the way, this is translated both. Womb or compassion. This is significant. I want you to think about it with me. The highest person. Uh, this is the inner chamber or secret place. Massive waters. So the highest person's inner chamber where the massive waters are at. 
Who puts life in the womb? The Savior does. God does. And out of the womb comes compassion. When Christ was moved with compassion for the lost and for the crowd. Listen. When God puts life at conception in the womb, that womb belongs to heaven. And a miracle's happening in that womb. And when we abort that baby, come on now, I didn't say fetus. That's an unborn child. That is a, that's a life that's in that womb. And so we know by looking at what the Bible says concerning life, the beginning of life, that this is holy. Life begins not at birth, but at conception in the womb. Because it's a miracle that God does. Let me tell you something. You can't create a life in an incubator. God creates it in the womb. Rakem is how you pronounce that. Okay, and then fruit. Now, what is this letter here? It looks like a G, only it's like upside down, right? Pay means to speak with the mouth. Raish, the highest person. And this little thing here means like the elbow. It, the elbow controls the hand. And so what it really means is work of the hand. And so if you put that together, this has something to do with fruit. So check it out. To speak of the highest, per the highest person's work produces fruit. If you speak the gospel and you speak the salvation and what Yeshua Christ did by living on earth, by coming here to start with and being born of a virgin in order to become the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world and you begin to speak about the work of His life and what salvation accomplished, come on, now there's going to be fruit that will come out of that. That's the kind of thing that God's talking about when He says fruit. Who produces fruit? Do you produce it? No, that's why John said in John 15, if you abide in Him, like the branch abides, abides in the vine, you will produce much fruit. And He produces it in you. I remember when I was a young man, when I was a boy, I remember watching my dad, he had fruit trees. And to get good fruit, they'd take a branch from another tree and they would cut a hole and graft it into the, uh, the trunk of the tree put some wax around it to protect it and string so it would be secured. They graft that new branch, maybe an apple tree, they grant, graft another branch from a different tree in there, and it causes it to produce good fruit. But if you remove, if something happens and you remove that branch from out of the stock that you just put it in, the branch will die. And so what, what John is saying to us in John chapter 15, you know, we're the branches, He's the vine. And you can't bear fruit without it. But if you get grafted in, come on, if you get grafted in to the vine, you're going to produce fruit. Why? Because He produces the fruit in you and causes it to come. Amen? So we want to stay grafted in. How do you do that? Well, you do that by continuing to walk with Him every day. You continue to pray you read the Word of God. You stay grafted in and connected with Him. Worship, praise. You stay grafted in. You're going to begin to produce fruit. Not because you tried to produce it. But it's, it is the result of abiding in Him that fruit begins to come. Even the fruit of righteousness. If you stay grafted in with Him who is righteous, He will make you righteous. And you will begin to do the works that He does. And somebody say amen. So how do you pronounce this? So we have... This is the P sound, right? Two dots here are E. This is the R sound, the resh. Uh, uh, and this E here. So, so this is pronounced pari. P-E-R-E-E. -E -E. Pari. And this is what it means. Okay, so finally the word for minister. Minister is made up of three letters. We have the shin with the dot on the right branch, which gives it the S-H sound. What if the dot was on the left branch? It would just be the S sound, right? And then we have the A, the resh, okay? And uh, again, the E or the A here, the line. And then this is the tav, which means covenant. So if you add these three letters together, this is fire that consumes. Highest person, covenant. So what is a minister? The fire of the highest person's covenant is what you minister. 
Wow. If you bring people into covenant with God, and God's an all-consuming fire, what does the fire do? It begins to consume the life of the person who has been grafted in with the Father, into covenant with Abraham. And, and so a minister is one who brings people into covenant with God, teaches them the walk in covenant, and then watches the fire consume them, transform them, and make them new. So, you know what? When Paul wrote, if anyone is in Christ, he has become a new creature. All things have become new, and old things have passed away. Why? Because when you're grafted into the covenant of the Father with, with him, and he's an all-consuming fire, your old life gets consumed so there's nothing left and you become a new creation. And that word new creation has to do with being transformed. A whole new creature. Not a makeover of the old sinful life. Come on now. We're talking about metamorphosis. We're talking about a new creation. Amen. You're no longer that old person. That person's dead. They, were, they died with Christ and were buried in the waters of baptism and raised up to newness of life. The old Marine, the old Jerry that used to be alive, he's gone. The new man has come forth after the likeness of Christ whom he serves. That's who we are. Wow. Raish, head of the house. Listen, the Bible says don't call anybody rabbi. Call no man father. Why? Because there's only one master, you can't serve two masters. And the master is who? Christ Yeshua. Shout of joy. The highest person's life is declared. Whoo! And we, we get to participate in that joy and have others participated in it. And then the womb of compassion. The secret place surrounded by massive waters. That's why when a woman gets ready to have birth, the water breaks and out comes the water, right? Fruit. To speak of the highest person's work will produce fruit in your life. And to abide in him. And then as ministers, wait a minute, is the minister only just the hired pastor that we have? We're all called to be ministers. We're part of a royal priesthood. And so all of us are called to minister the fire of the highest person by bringing people into covenant with him. So this is something that we have to get back in the church of today, the modern church is, this idea of we hire the preacher and he preaches and uh, we're just there to support or be entertained. No, 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 no. We're at church to be equipped because all of us as royal priests amen. are called to be ministers of salvation. Amen. Yes, amen. Praise God. Well, we're thankful for what we have in understanding today of the word "race" and what it means. We can meditate on it. Those of you that are taking notes today can take that home and think about what you've learned. But we want to be partakers, come on, partakers of salvation. So Father, bless us today as uh, we incorporate these teachings. We learn from the letter Rache what it means to be a minister of salvation and to serve the highest person in his house. And then we get to bring others to him. Bless us now, we pray. We ask in Christ Yeshua's name. Amen. Hallelujah. To God be the glory.